Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Madhusudan and the team for uh, having such a nice meeting. And uh, thanks for having me here. So I'm going to talk on liver transplantation for hepatoblastoma. I think most of the things have been made clear by pre previous two talks. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with the case and then we'll go on uh, in terms of what are the indication, contraindications and what are the problems with liver transplantation and what are the outcomes. So this is a 27 month old female child presented with abdominal lump and was found to have multifocal hepatoblastoma in the liver. The AFP was more than uh, 4 lakhs and she did have an FNSC which was uh, suggestive of hep hepatoblastoma. So this was actually staged as pretext 4, portal vein, right portal vein was thrombosed and uh, she had multifocal disease as well. So P plus and F plus as well. So, so the talking points here are indications, contraindications for liver transplantation, what should be the ideal timing of liver transplantation, what are the survival after liver transplantation. And obviously we live in an era of LDLT, we don't have cadaveric donation, so LDLT versus DDLT, primary versus salvage liver transplantation, and then we'll conclude the talk. So in terms of treatment goals, this, this has already been told in the previous two talks, chemotherapy remains an essence of preoperative treatment and also as an adjuvant therapy, and then it comes down to resection. And, uh, Despite crucial role of chemotherapy, surgery is uh, very vital in terms of complete cure. And what we see, the current results of five years survival actually goes up to 70 to 80 percent. So if we take 100 children with hepatoblastoma, 85 of them will be unresectable initially and 80 of them will, will become resectable after chemotherapy. But 20 of these actually need liver transplantation. As, and as Dr. Srimal told in, in his talk previously that that actually the rate of liver transplantation has increased over the last decade. So the, at one time it was about 6%, it is now almost 25% of hepatoblastomas are being offered liver transplantation and that's because of the realization of uh, limitation of liver resection and extreme liver surgery as well. So in terms of coming to indication, the staging has already been discussed. So indication for liver transplantation are multifocal with all sector, all four sectors of the liver involved. That will be pretex 4. If you've got a solitary pretex 4 uh, uh, hepatoblastoma that are not clearly downstaged to pretex 3, then you have portal vein involvement, you have IVC or all three hepatic veins are involved. Then you have a central tumor which is not possible to do a conventional resection which is, uh, which is not uh, feasible. Then you have residual disease after resection, so that will be a rescue liver transplantation. If you have local recurrences after resection, then it will be a salvage liver transplantation. And obviously, as Dr. Srimal told, that there, there are complications with extreme liver resection in terms of uh, development of uh, liver failures, bilomas, and some of them may actually need, need liver transplantation as well. So what, what are the contraindications of transplanting these babies? Basically, absolute contraindication is persistence of macroscopic metastasis after chemotherapy and which are not enabled to surgical excision. And relative will be persistence of vascular invasion despite chemotherapy. So that's just a relative contraindication. You can still go ahead and transplant them. So if presence of metastasis per se actually doesn't, doesn't, have, doesn't, doesn't have to be a contraindication as long as they respond to chemotherapy and they can be resected before transplant is being offered. And uh, small residual meds can be resected before liver transplantation as well. So lung metastasis doesn't really make, it, make the liver transplantation contraindicated in this, in this group of patients. So what are the outcomes of liver transplantation? So this we just put up in a table and you can see as, as the time progresses, the outcomes have improved and the current recent series actually the, transma, the, the outcomes have been reported more than 90%. Some of the series is actually reporting 95% uh, at five years as well with recurrence free survival reaching up to 80% as well in recent times. So what should be the ideal timing of liver transplantation in, in this patient? So, uh, what the data shows is 54% of deaths actually after liver transplantation results because of disease relapse and liver, should not, liver transplant should not be delayed in excess of 4 weeks after the last course of chemotherapy 
and and if you if you have got a good ddlt program then then actually you are allowed to list them as status 1 so that you can get the organ in time and you don't wait too long after chemotherapy is finished and obviously ldlt has got a big advantage in terms of timing the transplantation and uh, you can always uh, time the transplantation after the chemotherapy is finished but if there is a delay in transplantation then you should give them second line of chemotherapy a uh, second course of chemotherapy and then whenever the transplant become feasible is they it should be done uh, as soon as possible they should all be offered adjuvant chemotherapy so current protocols most of the patient who becomes hemodynamic stable they have they are on a stable immunosuppression and they don't have current any running issues they they will be started on chemotherapy after transplants once the cytopenia and everything has recovered as well so what are the outcomes of patient when we see ddlt versus ldlt so there is always a controversy especially in adult hepatocellular carcinoma so what are the results in terms of uh, hepatoblast uh, uh, hepatoblastoma for the kids and the data actually shows that the outcomes are similar for ddlt and ldlt so this is the large series data about 83 of them had ddlt and 134 of them have a live, live donor liver transplantation and there was no significant difference in terms of uh, long term outcome of this patient and there was in terms of complication rate actually early vascular complications were more with ddlt and the biliary complications were actually similar with ldlt and ddlt so then there comes the controversy about resection versus liver transplantation and this is an interesting paper of a retrospective study about uh, over 25 years 76 children uh, 46 of them male and 30 of them female with a median age of around 25 months 49 of them had resection and 27 of them had liver transplantation they were comparable in terms of their preoperative status the ones who had liver transplantation obviously had had a longer median time to transplant more multifocal tumors in liver transplantation group and more vascular invasion in liver transplantation but they had similar outcome in terms of uh, whether they had liver resection or transplantation and the disease free survival was also uh, up to 10 years it was similar whether you had resection or liver transplantation so liver transplantation the point in this paper is liver transplantation doesn't really disadvantage them this is a group of patient who would have otherwise won't have a surgical option but with liver transplant and they had a good good long term prognosis and then the one thing is you know when we come to extreme liver resection and especially patient with the with the higher stage of disease high risk patient this is one paper which is important so this is as as the pretext for staging increases the survival after liver resection actually decreases and this is when you have pretext 2 there are more patient who could who survived after liver resection but when they have pretext 4 then obviously the numbers are low but still there was almost 50% mortality in 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 that group so obviously we should not be pushing patient unnecessarily for resection who can be actually benefit from transplant when and will have a better outcome after transplantation so this is an again an important point about primary versus rescue because you know you have a thinking that okay we going to resect and then if they recur then we'll do, we'll do a transplant on them or if they develop a complication then we'll do a transplant on them but the data on this is very clear that when you do a res rescue transplantation actually the survival comes down dramatically on them so it, when you do a primary transplant the, the the survival is about 82% but a rescue transplant the survival is actually 30% and the and the important th fa factor in terms of multivariate analysis here is that the macroscopic venous invasion which was the most important prognostic factor so we should not have a temptation for unnecessarily resecting patient who may actually benefit from an upfront transplant so the, in terms of our own experience so we 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 are now more than 920 transplant majority of this is live donor liver transplant we done about 125 pediatric transplants and uh, this is our overall outcome for pediatric transplant the five year survival goes up to 80% and in terms of etiology we do lot of acute liver failures compared to elective transplant about 44% of our transplant for pediatric is acute liver failures and uh, in terms of hepatoblastoma so we had 11 patients with hepatoblastoma one has lost to follow up but nine we resected and one we actually transplanted and uh, this is the just the age distribution gender distribution about 50 50% 
and uh, so no patient who had surgery had pretext one disease most of them had two or three disease and one patient had a pretext four class uh, disease and vascular involvement was there in almost two third of this uh, sorry one third of them and uh, most of them had a good response to chemotherapy there was a high median afp levels as well and median number of cycles of chemotherapy they received was 6.5 and um, the interval between the last chemo and surgery was about 45 days. So this was the type of resections we have done, right hepatectomy. Most of them had extended right hepatectomies and then a uh, couple of them had uh, left hepatectomy and a uh, couple had extended left hepatectomy as well. Most of them, actually two third of them went on to receive adjuvant therapy as well. And there was no 30 day mortality, no patient had recurrence till last follow up and all patients are alive and doing well till present. So resection does have a good role, but in a selected case, case liver transplantation actually is better. So coming back to our co patient, original patient, they received a seven cycles of plado chemotherapy. The AFP came down to 27 and went on to have a live donor liver transplantation. Mother was the donor and uh, she had an uneventful recovery and she's doing well as well. So take home from my side is surgery with chemotherapy has resulted in a good five year survival of more than 80% in this group of patient. Pre-text and post-text uh, staging system with cross-sectional imaging is useful in risk stratification and treatment. Surgical resection remains the main, the main stay of therapy in low risk tumors. Patient with high risk tumor pre-text 4 and those requiring complex liver resection, maybe a liver transplantation is a better option than doing extensive surgery in this group of patients. Liver transplantation has increased resectability by 25 to 30% in high risk group and has achieved a long term survival of more than 80% and can be done even in metastatic disease as well. And LDLT, with LDLT, you can optimize the timing of surgery between the chemotherapy sessions as well. So liver transplantation has got a crucial role in patients with extensive disease as well. This is a child which I started with and uh, she has grown up well now. And uh, that's our team. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.